libraries, schools, computers, data. If due to some violent event, all of this are destroyed, what is that still remains? I believe it is the atomic theory that all things are made of atoms. Five, four, three, two, one. The ship rattles as it stretches out into the void, beginning the adventure of a lifetime. When Armstrong and Aldrin headed for history on the lunar surface, they needed only to travel a distance equal to the width of 30 Earths. Compared to the crew's destination though, the moon is a celestial snail. It crawls around the Earth once a month at a speed of a thousand meters per second. That may sound fast, but this satellite is whipping around at over two million meters per second, or just under one percent the speed of light. Our travelers are not exploring the astronomical realm, but the atomic one. But their mission is a lot harder than it first appears. The electron only orbits the proton like a moon orbits a planet. Modern quantum physics says that we can never know for certain where the electron actually is. We can only say where it's most likely to be. Today these bizarre atoms are the universe's Lego bricks. Vast galaxies swirl in the void and distant stars keep vigil over the night, but they are all built out of atoms. The number of atoms in your body alone exceeds the total number of stars in the entire observable universe. And yet, at the very beginning of time, the number of atoms in the universe was precisely zero. So how did we end up here? Where did the very first atom come from? And just why is everything made of atoms? Let's find out. The first light in the universe. In 1932, the physicist George Gamow and his wife Lyubov secured passage to a scientific conference in Belgium. Free from the shackles of oppression, Gamow is now able to continue his work. And it is this work that would turn out to be pivotal in our understanding of physics. It would change the way we think about the history of the universe forever. In 1929, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble had shocked the astronomical establishment with evidence that the universe is expanding. If the universe is growing day by day, then it was smaller yesterday and smaller still a week ago. Keep rewinding the clock and there was a time when every part of the modern universe was concentrated down into an incredibly small space. The Big Bang. Up until this point, cosmologists had assumed that the early universe was dominated by matter. But Gamow and his student Ralph Alfier began to suspect otherwise. They claimed that the early universe wasn't dominated by matter, but by electromagnetic radiation. This electromagnetic radiation would supposedly dominate the early universe for 50,000 years. After the Big Bang, physicists have another word for this radiation. Light. And so light and matter were trapped together in the nascent universe. After 100,000 seconds of expansion, the entire universe was still denser than the air you're breathing right now, and continued for thousands of years to be dense enough for sound waves to travel through. Sound waves were at such low frequency that they need to be squashed by 100 septillion times. That's one followed by 26 zeros, just to push them into the range of human hearing. As the universe kept expanding, it continued to stretch out these sound waves, shifting them to ever lower frequencies. But then there came a point when everything changed. It is called recombination. But what is recombined exactly? And what does this first light have to do with the first atom? First atom. You are trapped in an impenetrable maze. Whichever way you turn just leads to a blocked path. No matter how hard you try, you just can't figure out how to escape. 
This is exactly what light encountered after the Big Bang. However, very quickly light turned into its own captor, snapping the shackles shut on itself. This happened because light leads a double life. Like the vampires and werewolves of myth, in folklore, it can shapeshift into something else. Matter. Light is a form of energy, and energy and matter are two sides of the same cosmic coin. They are completely interchangeable. So within a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, some of the universe's energy is converted into particles of matter that start popping into existence. In 1948, Gamo had a letter published suggesting that within a handful of minutes of the Big Bang, the universe cooled to a billion degrees, enough to allow the strong nuclear force to stick a proton to a neutron a roughly 20-minute period in which about a quarter of the universe's mass of hydrogen nuclei turned into helium nuclei. Incredible progress in just over a quarter of an hour, but we still don't have the first atom. The electromagnetic force can snare a passing electron and trap it in orbit around the nucleus, but the electromagnetic force is 100 times weaker than the strong nuclear force. So the universe has to cool all the way down to just 4,000 degrees for the electromagnetic force to do its thing. This will take 380,000 years of expansion after the Big Bang until the universe reaches this point to give rise to the first atom. The Big Bang Challenge The Second World War has been raging for two years, and the United States remains neutral. Within weeks, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, and the United States entered the war the very next day. Robert Dickey is a keen inventor at MIT, with a real skill for electronics working on radar. The term radar, radio detection, and ranging was coined by the U.S. Navy just the year before by sending out short pulses of radio waves. One can detect objects like enemy aircraft when they reflect those radio waves back to you. Dickey invents a new receiver to pick up these reflected microwaves, now called the Dickey radio meter. Beyond the purpose in the war, he wonders whether any microwaves are coming from the cosmos. Dickey finds the idea of the Big Bang a little conceptually troubling. How can something come from nothing? So Dickey explores the idea of silical universes, an expanding universe that slows, stops, and shrinks collapsing back in on itself in a big crunch, only to explode outwards. Again, in another Big Bang. By thinking this scenario through, Dickey hits upon the notion that there should be relic radiation left over from this super hot stage and that it would still be visible today. He calls it fireball radiation. Dickey calculates, that his fireball radiation would have been stretched right out through the infrared and into the microwave spectrum. Atom is everything. The universe began almost 14 billion years ago, but the formation of the first atom was such a monumental moment in its history that echoes of the event remain our invisible companions throughout our lives and will take trillions of years of expansion yet to be stretched, out beyond our view. And so, you may be forgiven for thinking that the rise of the atom was inevitable, but that is certainly not the case. In fact, it is quite the opposite. The Canadian philosopher and author John Leslie asks us to imagine how unlikely it seems that you're still alive. It only needed one shot to hit its target and yet every single shooter missed. You owe your existence to an incredibly precise and improbable sequence of events. Any deviation from it, and you simply wouldn't be here. The atom is so ubiquitous that we take it for granted. Atoms, after all, are everywhere. Maybe it's just dumb luck. After all, the settings all have to be somewhere, and although almost impossible, they could have all fallen in the right place so as to give rise to the first atom 
some 380,000 years after the Big Bang. The Opinion There is another option, though. Thanks to the strands of evidence, like the cosmic microwave background, cosmologists are confident that the universe began with something like a Big Bang. But what banged exactly? The Big Bang is a good theory, but not a perfect one. Some scientists believe that the cracks can be papered over, and the theory salvaged. If there was more than one bang, perhaps an infinity of bangs, each one giving rise to a new universe. The settings on the control panel of each universe could vary depending on the exact way that universe emerged from the cacophony. All possible settings would be found across this endlessly large multiverse. You, a giant lump of atoms, can only find yourself in a universe where the strengths of the fundamental forces and the masses of the subatomic particles allow atoms to form. Hope you like this video. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.